Hello, I'm Matt Carlone. I'm the design team leader for GW Steel Bridge this year. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the design philosophy and process that we took for this year's design. So this year was certainly an interesting problem statement. Not many on the team were familiar with SKUs. So to start off the design process, we chose to create a 1 to 7 uh, wood model of the bridge within the design parameters. The wood model was very helpful because it allowed us to explore a couple of different ideas and also showed us where we were likely to run into problems with the, with our design. Obviously, we don't want that to happen when the steel's already ordered and cut, so the wood model is a helpful practice run. One of the clear areas that was going to be challenging for us that we saw immediately in the wood model was the transverse design. Um, so we chose to push this off until we could zero in on an effective and interesting design for the truss spans. Ultimately, what we decided on for the truss bays was cold bent steel arches on the top and bottom of the bridge uh, connected in the middle by a single bolt. Uh, the design team liked this idea because it was definitely more aesthetically pre pleasing than traditional generic triangles and gave the bridge a lot of character. Uh, in addition to the aesthetics, the uh, GW has a history of utilizing cold bent steel uh, simply because it allows you to show off some of the best qualities of the steel um, it looks nicer, creates a cleaner profile, and in the end, it's uh, it, it was pretty easy to construct. The steel arch design also affords a considerable amount of strength to the bridge and reduces the amount of splices along the bridge, which fulfills a major goal this year to make the bridge uh, efficiently constructible. The transverse section of the bridge proved to be the most complicated, though. The design team would have liked to connect the transverse bars to the same nodes where the bays were connected to each other for the truss, but ultimately we decided that this would have created too much activity in those areas and likely would have caused some sort of failure at the connections due to there just being so much stress at those points. So in the end we decided to offset the connections for the transverse bars a few inches to either side of where the truss bays connected to each other. This definitely complicated some of the calculations and forced us to create an asymmetrical design for the transverse bars. Uh, the reason for the asymmetry was the fact that we did not want long and necessary members in the middle of the bridge's transverse section due to the offset of connections and that's uh, it's kind of hard to explain but that's easier to see in the design drawings. Um, but in the end, we found in the analysis that this design was quite strong and it was also found to be fairly easy to construct. Um, additionally, it, it reduced the overall volume of the bridge and there were very little inefficiencies within any section of the bridge. So overall, it was, uh, it was a great accomplishment for the team. Hi, I'm Savannah Stewart, and I'm one of the co-captains of the GW Steelbridge team. My role on this team was leading an analysis subgroup and creating a 2D and 3D model of our bridge in StatPro. We started by creating a 2D truss, which included a pin and roller support, as well as the same section properties for every beam. This was used to find the internal forces for every beam under every vertical load case. You may notice that we use straight members instead of curved members because you cannot measure curved members' internal forces in STAD Pro. The maximum internal force values for every beam out of every load case were found and recorded. These internal forces were compared to the nominal compressive strength and nominal tensile strength of various HSS members to find the lightest beams that still supported every load case. Once the beam section properties were chosen for our bridge, these values were assigned to our 3D model in order to define the deflections in our bridge. This model includes transverse members, fixed end supports, and the correct curved members like in our design, which we could not have in our 2D truss. This 3D model includes all six vertical cases as well as the lateral load test. The six vertical cases each include four distributed loads. Each distributed load is one half of the maximum loads applied at each specified decking unit. 
and it includes the self weight of the bridge. The distance of each of these distributed loads changes for every load cases as specified in the rules. A lateral load includes a point load pulling the bridge laterally in the Z direction and a counter weight along the decking unit, and it includes the weight of the bridge. This bridge in STAD Pro lets us export a beam displacement detail table to find the deflections for every beam and every point on that beam under every load case. The specific deflection values that need to be found are all listed in our report. All of the lateral deflections are under 1 inch, and all of the vertical deflections are under 3 inches. So, our bridge passes all deflection tests, and therefore, the analysis portion of our bridge was a success. Hello, my name is Julie Apichabani, and I am one of the co-captains of the Steel Bridge team at the George Washington University. Fabrication and constructability were the most important factors while designing the bridge. A combination of methods involving splicing, cold bending, drilling, welding, and grinding were performed to fabricate all parts of the bridge. These methods ended up being the final decision to create the bridge. The techniques for our bridge were first tested in the machine shop on practice pieces before they were formally developed and adopted in the bridge construction. What helped us to make a final decision on methods to use were based on whether or not multiple people on the team were able to replicate the work done from person to person. Being concise and consistent with how we would cold bend pieces or finally and shaving them down was important. Each piece that was made is specific to its location making it crucial that parts were properly labeled and ready to go. The types of connections used on this bridge were welded connections along with plates and bolts that were helped to form it. The proposed design has X-shaped trusses for a stronger frame support and transverse members. The trusses are welded to the transverse members for strong support and adjacent transverse members are connected by a bolt. This gives them freedom to move but it means that the fitting of them to the transverse members must be perfectly aligned. The members would have been connected to each other using bars, cords, and bolts, but this can cause the frames to move even more. Creating the X shape involves cold bending of the members, and this can cause problems with frequent adjusting so that all members are identically bended. Another pitfall is that it may be difficult to match up the holes and transverse members to place bolts. Another thing to note is that the bolt method is most convenient and makes it easier to connect the top and the bottom trusses with the transverse members. This is the feasibility of our bridge structure. Portions of it are using methods that at times can be site pitfalls, but ultimately we thought it would be the best to use cold bending methods as it is something that we knew that we could replicate often, but also that we felt just worked best with our overall design. As previously mentioned, one of our main factors on our team is making sure that everyone was able to be as part of the construction process as they wanted to be. Cold bending was the main innovative technique we used for steel rods, given the fact that it could be easily replicated from team member to team member, and is a method that was used to create the X shape in the structure. Because this method requires time and consistency, we wanted to maximize our time and use this method when we knew we could have it be the main focus of the day and involve everyone. However, we chose to cold bend the X-shaped section of the bridge because that allows for the weight to be distributed over a larger, more composite section. Rather than creating four different legs for each part of the X, we would cold bend two straight pieces of steel rods using the pumps and then to one another, as well as the frame. The cold bending allowed for fewer inconsistencies in the structure when performed properly and after having been practiced.